Hi everyone, I'm Kimberly Truler. I'm the Integrated Marketing Manager for Meraki Go, and I'm so excited for today's conversation about hybrid work with my guest, Colin Averill. Colin is a Solutions Marketing Manager at Cisco with a focus on experiences and how those shape the modern workforce and workspace. He's also working on competitive intelligence gathering, with an eye on cloud-based competitors. Colin has spent more than 15 years in the networking and telecommunications industry with roles in learning and development, product management, and of course, solutions marketing. Welcome, Colin. Thank you so much, Kimberly, for having me today. I'm very excited to have this conversation. And this is a good one because this is something that though we're focusing on small businesses, I think we're all having conversations about hybrid work, whether you're an employer or an employee. I mean, case in point, you're based in Denver. I'm based in Los Angeles. We work for a global corporation that's based in San Francisco. So we are living the hybrid dream right now. We definitely are. Um, but, you know, some of our conversation is um, it might be easier for bigger companies to achieve a hybrid workforce and more challenges for small businesses. Um, so I know a lot shifted with the pandemic and the pandemic, people were sort of forced into the remote and hybrid mm -hmm. <laughs> workspace. Um, but now things are settling all over the place. People, are, companies are trying to find their bearings. So what is the state of hybrid work for small businesses in 2023? Ah, uh, yeah, that's a really phenomenal way to start this out. And I think the big, I, I want to start with sort of the elephant in the room around this, which is the term hybrid work or remote work has been so prevalent over the last three years that. I think a lot of folks believe that because we've talked about it so much, everyone is there and everyone's achieving and succeeding and they've met their goals and they're checking all the boxes and they're doing an incredible job. And I think what we find is that is maybe not always the case, right? Like just because it's been in the, the, the news and, and all these conversations, it doesn't mean that folks have really found their stride yet. And that's why I think these conversations are so critical because it hasn't gone away, right? It's not, and it's not getting any easier in a lot of cases. But the good news is, I feel like we have so many uh, examples and role models now of organizations that have tried and failed or tried and succeeded and iterated over the years that um, I think that path to a stronger hybrid and remote work uh, state for organizations, including smaller businesses that are supported by Meraki Go, I think is in a much better spot. And, you know, recently we've got an SMB survey um, that showed for small, so think 50 employees and less kind of organizations, 75% of those um, are in a hybrid or remote work model. I mean, that, I mean, three fourths, right? That, that is the case. That is the truth that we're running into today. And, and, and I, you'll hear this throughout some of this conversation today, but this focus on cybersecurity, because uh, the moment you pull someone out of a locate a work location, all of a sudden security issues become uh, exponentially growth. They grow yeah. exponentially, um, yeah. and and I think those challenges come into play. And fifty two percent of organizations say they're focused on that, and we really want to see that number keep growing up uh, because yeah. security is so key. And I think the last thing I'll just mention is right when we think about sort of these top, uh, we we heard about top three factors, if you will, kind of these three factors. Um, when selecting an IT solution, um, and, and they're really around costs, ease of use, and reliability. Um, and I, I think whether you are a very small organization or a huge enterprise, honestly, those three are pretty consistent. It's just what they mean or sort of how they uh, reveal themselves um, yeah. can be different. Yeah, and I think we need to take the pressure off small businesses because, you know, we work at Cisco, but even Cisco has evolve, you know, it's like you bump into where the challenges are and then you just deal with them. So I want a little of the pressure to the small business owners out there that don't feel like you have to be perfect out of the gate. And and we're here today discussing all of this and giving you options so that you don't feel that that pressure. And we know that it's harder 
for small businesses with budget and and so on. So what do small businesses need mm. um, when they start offering hybrid work? Yeah, I think there's some, uh, I'll call them sort of the bigger boulders that they need to be thinking about. Um, and this is by no means an exhaustive list, but I think we we hear these over and over again from folks. And I think the first one's communication. Yeah. Um, you know, just, just like you started off with, right? No matter where those employees are based, um, we have to have the ability to have regular communication and the ability to have multiple avenues for that communication. So whether it's email or chat tools or video conferencing or whatever the case may be, like th those are still super important because they've in a lot of ways taken the place of an in-person meeting. Um, and and I would say why, one of the reasons that communication is so critical is because we hear folks talk about productivity, right? If you're a remote worker, if you're a hybrid worker, um, how are you staying productive? How are you staying focused? And, and these communication techniques, I think are a huge part of that making sure that we are still delivering on the goals and the expectations that the businesses need from us. I get a little frustrated with the um, storyline that gets out there about remote employees not being productive or how can we keep on top of our employees to keep them working? It's like, if you have projects that have deliverables, <laughs> you'll know pretty darn quickly. And also mm -hmm. when I worked in the office, um, like, it was a running joke that the bulk of our communication was done by email, even when we were in a cube universe. So I think people need to put aside the whole, you need to be in the office so that we can see you working. I think that that really not, people need to shed that pretty quickly. Because you and I, again, are living, breathing examples that I'm more productive in a work environment where there aren't, I mean, we get interrupted on Slack and stuff like that, but I mean, I am way more productive working remotely than I ever was in the office. So to, for what that's I mean, to feel. And, and I think that's huge. And, you know, I think in this conversation, this will probably come up, but just, I think to your point, right, that level, well, actually, let me, let me just go into a little bit. So yeah. this. This idea around, I'll, I'll sort of bucket it as like general enablement for employees and staff, right? And one of those I think is comfort. Like uh, I, uh, so I'm in that millennial age group um, and I am always thinking about my work-life balance. Mm -hmm. That to me is critical because like my family is so important. Um, uh, I just got back from a vacation with a huge family vacation that we went on. Like this, that's how I spend my time. That's where I enjoy my life and I need to be able to have that flexibility so that um, when my nephew needs picked up from school and mom and dad are swamped with the other kids, like can I jump in and be able to support them in that way? And so I'm thinking about those things as well. And what I love about that too, is that the benefit for businesses and organizations is that you then have access to a larger talent pool. Yeah. I mean, I think about you know, we talk across the board with organizations and, and some businesses by nature being there in person is critical. Sure. Uh, one of the small businesses my parents own is an engraving business uh, that's been in the family for like uh, wow. 50, 60 years now. It's kind of hard to do that job remote, yeah, right? It's <laughs> my mom, who is essentially, we joke, she is CFO and IT. Um, that is her uh, role. Uh, she's also the CEO, if we're being honest. Um, you know, she could really do that from anywhere. She'll go vacation. We have a small cottage on a lake in uh, northern Michigan, and that's where she will spend her time. And she can do that work from there, right, right? in that very small microchasm. Um, and I, you know, I mentioned I sort of joke with her as IT uh, staff as well. Um, but I, I think it's important to also call out that team because, you know, so often we're seeing organizations uh, wanting to centralize IT operations. Um, there are some huge benefits to that, right? Like I can stand up a small pod, an office, um, or have a team that's more centrally located because it lets me, uh, uh, they work together better, they staff, we staff up a little bit easier, like sort of all those pieces and parts, but then giving them the tools to say, and sometimes you're going to be at home. Sometimes you're going to be on the road. Sometimes you're going to be supporting a building that is not one you sit in. And, and how can we bring those tools to make that experience even better? And so... I'll then put a bow on this by saying, anytime I talk about someone at work, you know I'm going to talk about security. 
right? Yeah. And, and hybrid work demands those layers of security uh, to protect both businesses, employees, uh, and customers, right? So yes, we're using multi-factor authentication. Yes, we're using virtual private networks or VPNs, of course. Um, but in the end, I think that's also in service to the customers, right? We as a customer of your business, um, sometimes we're asked to provide uh, identifiable data. Um, I think about email addresses, phone numbers, addresses, like, and those may seem benign, but because those are tied to private information to some extent, you know, yeah. there, there's always going to be a security risk with stuff that you feel like, oh, I give my email to everybody, it doesn't matter. Well, there always can be that opportunity. And so I think security is sort of paramount as we think about how we're making a better experience for our employees, staff, and customers. I totally agree. Let, let me talk about just a couple more things about like the benefits of hybrid work. Um, I just did an interview um, with Colin Seward, who's um, on the sustainability IT oh. side of things. <clears throat> and so sustainability and, and hybrid work really go hand in glove because now you're cutting down on the commutes for employees. Now you're cutting down on the amount of power, water, et cetera, that you have to pay for in the office. So, um, you know, I don't want small businesses to think, I mean, there are some things, including um, Meraki Go that we'll talk about in a little bit, that, that you do need to acquire something to your point about security um, and having that infrastructure but there really are some cost savings like benefits for small businesses that i want them to be able to appreciate about hybrid work yeah i think you know i spend a lot of my time talking about sustainability as well and i think you brought up some really incredible points and and the the what we see over and over again is that when you look at like business objectives and sustainability objectives they usually uh, pair up or overlap or are the same thing uh, over and over again. We see that over and over again because you talk about this idea of, you know, reducing costs, right? That is a business outcome, right? We're trying to find efficiencies and all that. But, but sometimes that cost reduction comes from lower power consumption, right? I think to your example that you had there or, or reducing travel and waste. Um, like it's, they all, uh, to steal a phrase from you from just now, hand in glove, I think is the perfect way to talk about that because they are so intertwined and so, uh, they're so connected uh, to one another. And you talked about the importance of the work-life balance. I mean, you may be in uh, of a generation that that seems to be more of a priority, but even my Gen X generation, um, I think everyone is just, I think just because life is just getting so crazy that people are grounding themselves and saying, okay, what is really important here? We have one life to live. What, what can we do to have our best lives? And hybrid work, to your point, does enable a much better work-life balance. Granted, you kind of have to learn to set up some boundaries because you know, I've got Cisco in my home now. So it's not like you leave the office and you leave the work um, behind. Um, but once you do that and get into the groove of it, yeah, you, I mean, you're able to just do more with the same amount of time. And as we we're both saying too, like, you know, the product, we're not suffering in the productivity department. And there's many studies. In fact, I think it was AT&T's future of work study that showed that there was like a 79% increase in productivity. And I think that's one of these myths that's out there that when you allow remote work and allow hybrid work, that everybody's just going to be slacking off, you know, with their work-life balance. <laughs> and, um, but that that just isn't the case. So I want I want small businesses to feel empowered by it and not hindered by mm -hmm. it. I love that. Um, so you also touched upon one of the challenges, uh, and it's a big one. Uh, for hybrid work, which yeah. is the concept of cybersecurity, that that comes into play 
immediately um and you and i have experienced what i mean cisco has multiple layers of of cybersecurity to protect the network, protect the employees, protect the company. Um, so can you talk about that a little bit more? What what should small businesses be, um, you know, mentally, what should they be prepared to do to to um, protect their business in that way? Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a really important question. So um, sometimes the simplest tools are the best. Mm. And I think about, you know, I, you and I work for a global corporation. I am securely connected to the network via VPN. Yes. It like, I think sometimes folks, um, maybe dismiss the, these technologies or these concepts or ideas because VPNs are not new, right? These are not new ideas, but they have become more important for everyone to leverage. Yeah. I mean, yeah. even on my personal machines, I have VPN licensing, right? That I leverage and use because I I want it. The uh, we always think of it as you know how do I um, how do I make it just a little harder? I feel like sort of the my analogy that I always think through is, look, uh, in my home, like if somebody really wants to come in, they're coming in. But if I'm locking doors and windows, if I've got motion lights, right? If I've sort of raised the minimum challenge that they would face to enter the home in yeah. such a way like i think that can make a difference so how do you how do you take the target off yourself and i i think there's many technologies out there but honestly like let's start with vpns um and so many uh you know I, their go products include vpn licensing right and i think yeah. it's just like an easy tool it's not even people. licensing with meraki go that's oh, the, yeah that's, that's right that's yes difference yeah it's like meraki go one of the biggest benefits is that th you buy the device and that's it you're there there are no subscriptions no licenses and just this past october we came out with the router firewall plus which originally had client vpn but now has site to site vpn as well which for small businesses if you're not familiar with that that means you can have a router firewall plus at each one of your locations and each one of you can connect through that secure encrypted tunnel if you will um, to protect all your confidential business information so I mean, amazing. And, you know, I think uh, any of the uh, audience who are maybe watching this conversation happen, when they think about that site to site, I would hope that the the phrase SD-WAN is sort of coming to mind, right? This, like, this technology that's really, I would say, is sort of the shining star and still is over the last five or so years. Uh, site to, it, not to oversimplify, but you're talking about site to site VPNs. Right, like there may be some other nuance that comes along with SD WAN and some of that integration, but like thinking about these small businesses, like there's basic protections you can put in place that are really strong at, and backed backed by Cisco. You know, yeah. I think about the just the I'll call it the security engine that really runs this organization, um, and it's all about that security, right? And Cisco Talos detects millions and millions of attacks every day right across our network. Like that's something that I really want to be able to say to small businesses, like you should join us in that, right? Like let us take that off of you. Let us bring that expertise so that you can go do what you do best, right? Serve your customers, take care of your employees and make your community a better place. Well, and that's the thing. It's like these devices, they come with so much security within it even beyond the vpn that like you're saying it's like they're they're looking for malicious websites they're looking for ongoing and ever evolving online threats coming at you um and then just good old underappreciated multi-factor authentication when i talk to mike storm about cybersecurity, you know it's like nearly 100 percent of account hacks are, are protected against with the, the multi-factor authentication. And you mentioned that we have to VPN in, but we also are like multiple times a day we're doing multi-factor, depending on where you're going, you're gonna get challenged on, on multi-factor authentic authentication. And that's something that you can do on Go as well. 
And and I think what you're also you're I think what we're sort of I don't want to say dancing around, but I do want to acknowledge like sometimes these security processes can feel annoying. Mm. Right. They can feel yeah. that way as the user, right? Yes. Like having yes. to log in multiple times, having to make sure I've got my phone with my app that I can verify the code and and all of these things. But um, I think this is where it's really important that we help small businesses be able to tell that story to their teams, right? To say, yeah. our goal is to reduce the negative impact to your day to day. Yeah. And sometimes that's how do we make logging on and authentication simpler, right? I think that can that's part of that story. But the other is, you know, how do we put those protections in place? Because I am really good at doing multi-factor authentication. What I'm not doing is recognizing security threats uh, and preventing them or solving them once they've happened, right? That is not within my skill set. And I think that is an important discussion to be able to have to say like, yeah, I know it may feel a little harder. It may feel a little uh, cumbersome at times, Yeah, but that cost is so outweighed by the benefit um, that I think it's a really important conversation for folks to be able to have. I I completely agree. And I saw some quote that the, the hackers expect you to be lazy mm -hmm. and and they are rewarded every time you are. And right now there's a stat that only 45% of companies globally have enabled multi-factor authentication. So, you know, you speak to it feeling cumbersome and yeah, it's an additional step. Um, the good news is I think organizations like Cisco are continuing to try to make it feel less so. Um, you know, and we're getting biometrics involved with the, the fingerprint, you know, we've all got laptops now where you can you enter using your fingerprint. So, you know, just know everyone out there that people are working on it. <laughs> But it really, like every time you do that extra step, just say they can't get in, they can't get in. Like, and just, just that's the cost of peace of mind, I think. Absolutely, absolutely. So what do you think are some common mistakes that small mm -hmm. businesses make when they start the process in setting up hybrid work? Yeah, <laughs> um, so, uh... For those of you listening to this conversation, I apologize if I hit too close to home. Just ah. know that I can't see you react to the statements I'm about to make. And it's um, coming from a place of love. Yeah, it's so. coming from a place of love, absolutely. So I think the first one that I, especially when I'm talking to small businesses, um, a big mistake we make is leveraging consumer solutions. Um, and what do you mean by that? Yeah, great question. So um, think about when you roll into Best Buy, right? And you're yeah. like... Okay. I, uh, I heard that I need more wireless coverage and I Googled and that means mesh network. So I went and I bought, I won't name any brands, insert brand here, um, to create a mesh network, um, to be able to, uh, propagate Wi-Fi across my organization, uh, across my location. Maybe I'll say it that way. And I think, you know, there is a, um, there's something sort of nice about that because it feels easy to do especially because you may not have in-house IT to be able to help you with that. Well, and if I may, I'll oh, give you an even easier one, which okay. we battle all the time, which is just using the modem you get from your cable company to yep. do all your business stuff. Yep. Yep. <laughs> it's like, it's and, easy. And I think where we, where I then see that challenge or that the biggest concern is there, a lot of businesses sort of the the most separation that they will do for a network is having two different SSIDs, right? One for the business and one for guests. Because yeah. I feel like anywhere you go now, it's sort of expected that Wi-Fi is available, um, especially in a place where someone might be for an hour or more, right? I'm thinking a yeah. lot of like uh, uh, a lot of restaurants and cafes, but uh, libraries or whatever the case may be, right? Like Wi-Fi is sort of becoming more expected. Yeah. And um, and while SSIDs can help, um, there are people who are very smart, who because they can get onto the network itself, can figure out how to sort of back end into a network, 
uh, that maybe has business devices attached to it, um, yeah. which, you know, I think I talked about a little bit earlier, right? Sort of this personally identifiable information, uh, they can get access to those resources and databases. And, and I think why I bring that up is, you know, uh, so my sisters in law um, own a social media company uh, where they work with small businesses. And we talk a lot about sort of as in marketing, like what is, what do you own? What do you hold? And it's like, sure, you can have followers on, on Instagram, but technically that's Instagram, right? That's, you don't own those. What you do own though, are your email lists, right? And I think about small businesses that are gathering emails, whether it's for newsletters or for promotions or whatever kind of communication they want to do. Well, usually those emails that then again are tied to possibly things like credit card information, right? Depending on how your systems are set up. So like, I think leveraging customer solutions or consumer based solutions, consumer grade is, uh, can be, uh, uh, can be a slippery slope, um, for folks. I would say another one is, um, I always like to put it in the context of this idea of a break fix cycle. So, you know, when we're running our business and we're in the moment and we come up to a challenge, we figure out how to solve that problem and then we move on and then we solve the next problem and we move on. And what I would love for small businesses to be thinking more about is to step back. Uh, I had an old mentor who used to say, get in the helicopter, <laughs> get up above and take a look more broadly at what the challenges are you're facing um, to be able to say, yes, this is a challenge that I'm dealing with right now, but are there other sort of tangential or adjacent situations where if I just think a little more broadly, I can maybe solve those as well. Um, an example I always like to use is uh, around physical security. So I think more and more we are thinking about how do we monitor and, and protect the spaces that our employees and our customers are in. And so we maybe have got a physical security focus, but like we see organizations that say with the same data, right, that we're collecting, meaning these visual understanding of spaces and how people use them, I might be able to go in and say, you know, I've got this seating area over here that nobody's ever in. I wonder if I can do something different with that to make it more engaging, to draw more folks in, to make better use of my space, right? So uh, the answers aren't always uh, uh, clear or maybe they're not always as obvious, but I always love to challenge organizations to just take a step back and say, when I'm thinking about this challenge that I'm facing, are there other uh, tangential or, or um, connected um, challenges that maybe I haven't seen yet that I could possibly solve by just thinking a little bit bigger? Well, I like that as applies to something, surprise, like Meraki Go, because a lot, there's a lot of things that Meraki Go solves. Like, first of all, you're getting enterprise grade security. So to your point, don't use a consumer device for your business. Secondly, you know, you're talking about spaces and getting just more intel from being able to observe something like that. Meraki Go offers guest insights. So you start learning when the bulk of your customers are coming in, um, how to craft loyalty programs. There's just so much data that you can pull from that. And then also having the separate networks, the separate SSIDs for all your business stuff, like the point of sale system and all the equipment, the printers and phones and what have you. But then there's also the guest Wi-Fi that has its own landing page. Mm -hmm. And I know that there's there's entire companies out there that are set up to address each one of those things. And but to your point, by looking at it from that 30,000 foot view and see that those are all your needs, you can actually, again, by not getting a personal device that you're getting business grade wi-fi through something like meraki go i love that and i think what you're we're talking about sort of the experience right yes. that's what we're starting to really and that is i think so critical is like what is the experience of not only my customers but also my employees and staff mm -hmm. 
Um, and that's sort of, I think, the last thing that I always want to I want to touch on in this idea of sort of what are these uh, uh, maybe common mistakes that we see is forgetting the employee experience. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we can set up uh, networks and systems in such a way that uh, employees want to be there. They want to be involved. They want to be connected. They they see it as. Um, uh, as a benefit, not a hindrance, right? It is a, this is a path for me to be more successful, not a barrier getting in my way. And, uh, and all of that leads to, uh, loyalty, right? Employees staying around, which is then retain knowledge of experienced personnel. I mean, I just, I think it's as organizations are thinking about like, how do we make, how do we do something different? I think it's, it's the people that we work with every day that make the difference. And so how do we make an environment uh, that they want to be in, that they want to be a part of, whether that's physically in person or remote, right? Uh, tapping right. in and being a part of that team. Right. Listening to the employees and, and being flexible to what, like, we're, we're just mm -hmm. a different body of employees now. Um, we're different ages, we're different priorities. Um, we're just viewing the world differently. So, yeah, to not have such a rigid, you know, it used to be this way. That's the normal way, but being flexible to opening it up to, yes, having the best employee. I, I, I love that point that yes, the customers are of course important, but mm -hmm. you're not going to get the customers without the right employees. And so I think we've illustrated multiple ways um, from being able to go outside your local area for a hiring pool, but also, um, you know, as you illustrated, just having that better work-life balance. So um, I think we talked about some of the tools that Meraki Go uh, offers for hybrid work. I just would love to add one more, which is now we have the Wi-Fi 6. Um, access points, both indoor and outdoor. And the thing that I want small business owners to appreciate with Wi-Fi 6 is it gives greater capacity, not only that faster speed, which everybody loves the speed, but capacity is also important um, because of the number of employees, the number of customers, everyone's got 6 billion different mobile <laughs> devices now. Um, so <laughs> we've got to we've got to be evolve here a little bit. Um, you know, we uh, when I so I think about so when I need to get out of my house and change up my environment when I'm working, uh, there's this place that I love to go to, and it's got a ton of outdoor space. It's got great indoor space. They've got great Wi-Fi connectivity, um, so it makes working really easy, especially when I'm doing like video conferencing and things like that. Like it can ha their Wi-Fi can handle. Uh, what I throw at it. But to your point, I, at a minimum, will always have three devices that are connected to the internet. Always on me. And like, I think people, uh, I think it's important that we remind ourselves of that, that it's not like someone's coming in with like, oh, I'm connecting my laptop because I don't have built-in cellular. I also connect my cell phone. I connect my tablet that have built-in cellular, but like when I'm on Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi tends to be a better experience for me. And so, um, I love that call out uh, because I think it's just so important that we we keep that in mind, that it's not just like a one device thing anymore. It's it's more than that. Yeah, I mean, I think I saw a study where now just the average household has t an average of 25 connected devices at once, which is insane because you're talking about the smart TVs and the video game. I mean, like there's just so many and or smart refrigerators, smart toasters, like there are just so many things. I can, I can preheat my oven from the living room. Yeah, I'm with you. Now, do I? No, but I could if I wanted to, because it's all set up. That's right. That's right. Um, any final thoughts, any final wisdom that you'd like to share with small business owners? Yeah, I would love to just, um, if you don't mind, I've got some tips that I think could be like, as we think about trying to make it like practical, right? We've, we've talked a lot of theoretical and, and try to give some advice, but I think just some, some specific guidance, hopefully that will be helpful for folks. Yeah. Um, you know, I think, 
outside of networking and technology, right? I think as a small business owner, you know, we, I think it's important to understand what aspects of the job bring fulfillment to the employee. Um, and the ability to be hybrid and or remote, depending on that situation, is a can be a part of an employee's decision to join and to stay with an organization. You should leverage that as a part of your pitch as to why why us, why me, right? When those situations make the most sense. Um, I think the other two is, you know, just like we were talking about, you and I work for a global corporation. Well, that may not always be the case, right? We may have a change in our life and want to go do something different. And so you will have applicants that maybe are coming from larger organizations that have larger technology budgets, dedicated IT support in a way that you don't. So I think finding those way, finding ways to sort of mirror these best practices, like we talked about with things like VPN, et cetera, like I think can just help make that transition for an employee feel smoother, right? Try to try to smooth out some of the bumps. There's always bumps, right? But try to smooth some of them out where you can. Um, and I think lastly too, right, if you're not yet convinced that hybrid or remote work could work for you, um, remote positions allow for an increased hiring pool. Um, and while that is true, it also can make it tough for those employees to feel like part of a team. And so as you're thinking about this push and pull of should I or shouldn't I, tools that you make available to your teams and sort of the culture that you create really can can cross those borders and those boundaries. So uh, at, at Cisco, we have a tool that we use that randomly selects folks to have a, what, like a coffee date kind of thing, right? Where you like, you get on a WebEx together with people that you maybe don't work with very often or have never spoken to before. And it, 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 it's meant to sort of mimic that water cooler moment, right? Where it's like you're randomly together and you're having just these conversations and those types of things, I think make a huge difference. And so finding those opportunities to bring those remote employees that you really want to leverage because you need that talent pool and you're looking for all those other benefits uh, to still make them feel like they're part of the team. I agree. And I mean, thankfully we do have the tools to do that now. It's just, I was talking the other day with someone where I was saying the pandemic really came at the perfect time because technology was just in the right spot to be able to help with that. And it has continued to evolve quickly. Um, and one of the benefits of that are all these tools like Meraki Go that are accessible to small business owners who don't have dedicated IT departments. They really are easy to set up and manage themselves. So that it's just, it's a great place for us and for small businesses to be right now. So thank you so much for, for this conversation today. It was just fantastic. Yeah, well, and thank you, Kimberly, for um, reminding us through this conversation that we're still figuring out hybrid and remote work, right? We're still working on it. We're still progressing and that's okay. Um, it's a, it's a journey, not a destination. That's right. That's right. Well, thank you again. And thank you all for watching. This is going to be posted on both the Meraki Go YouTube channel, but also the blog where I'll have both a video and then a transcript of my conversation with Colin. And of course, links to all the products that we mentioned so you can empower your own small business. So thank you again for watching and until next time, bye-bye.